Okay, so as a lecture, this brings us to the end. The only thing left to do is to tell you, is to show you where does these magic formulas come from, right? Like seem to the whole mess come out of nowhere. Uh, let's understand the derivation of them. Where do they come from? And you have a solid grasp of where they, uh, of the meaning of them. Now, um, of uh, obviously this is not directly examinable in uh, most of the homeworks or tests. However, I really encourage you to just take 10 minutes out of your time um, and we be able to reproduce all this. So this is my challenge to you. And I will guarantee that if you can reproduce the next uh, 10 minutes of stuff over here, you will have a very good understanding of these things. Um, and uh, you'll be able to um, do the problems with much more ease than if you do not, okay? So I'll leave it up to you, but that's really my strong advice. And it's very simple as you'll see, okay? So um, the first two is especially simple. So I'll start with the uh, first one, okay? The first one says V equals to U plus AT. Um, so have that memorized, but if you think about it, I can rearrange that. So where does that come from, right? Where does this V equals U plus AT come from? If I rearrange that to V minus U divide by T, right? So if I subtract the U over here and divide by the T, you can check that. Does that look familiar to you? Well, yes, that is just the definition of what acceleration means. Remember, if you think about it, what is the definition of acceleration? Well, this is change in velocity over the change in time, right? So this is nothing, this statement is nothing, just a rearrangement of delta V, delta T, right? Um, this is, uh, because remember, if you look up what, when we define what the so bad variables are, T represents time taken. Right, so obviously, so delta t or t. That's we're just simplifying it with the Subad variables. We're just calling that t. So this is basically a one-line proof, a one-line derivation. This is simply the definition of acceleration. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Well, acceleration isn't it? Should shouldn't it be dv dt or the limit of that? Well, yes, but remember, I said Subad equations only work in constant acceleration motion. Right, constant acceleration problem, and when it's when acceleration is constant, the dv dt is the same as delta v delta t. The instantaneous, in other words, in in normal human language, <laughs> that means the instantaneous acceleration is the same as the average acceleration because acceleration is constant, right? So at every instant, it's the same, right? So there's only one acceleration, and uh, that is it, done. Number two, right? Now this looks a little bit more weird. Um, but if I stare at that, let me put a brackets around it, right? Let me put a parentheses, uh, u, u plus v over two times t, I put a brackets around this. What does this look like, right? What does u plus v divide by two? When do you take two things, add them and divide by two? When do I take two numbers, add them and divide by two? I usually I'm finding the average. Well, I'm taking the initial velocity and the final velocity, and divide by two, right? That means I'm finding the average velocity. So this is just nothing but average velocity. So I can write it like this, right? Or I can rearrange that now. Average velocity is divide the t like that. Well, what does that tell you? Well, what, what is s again? In, this is our, our shorthand, right? If we use the SUVAD variables, this is the shorthand for delta x. That's displacement, right? Displacement is a change in position. Right, if you go from x initial to x final, that's change in position. And t is our shorthand in the SUVAT scheme, in the SUVAT approach. It's a shorthand for delta t, it's the time taken, right? So that's s, that's t, that's average velocity, right? That's nothing but just the definition of average velocity. So SUVAT equation number one, equation number one is just the definition of a, right? It's just the definition of a. And number two is just a definition of v, v bar, right? Average velocity rearranged into a more friendly format, right? Uh, uh, well, you might say that's more friendly, but that's easier to use so in the SUVAT. Remember, we, we state the givens and the aim, and then this one has no A, no, no T, no V, no U, right? So um, yeah, yeah, so it's just more user-friendly when we actually solve problems, all right? How about three and four? Now, it turns out um, that's all you need. Because now um, this, these are just rearrangements of these two combined. Okay, so this one doesn't have a V, right? 
So if, if this one has no V, this one has no T. So all you have to do is take these two equations, eliminate the V and eliminate the T. All right, I'll show you how this is done and I'll leave that as a exercise for you. I'll post a short follow-up video as a solution, but I encourage you to give it a try before you watch it, all right? In fact, uh, you should, let me do both um, in the follow-up video. Um, and I want you to try, see if you can eliminate this, um, eliminate the V from these two, you should get this, eliminate the T from these two and you should get this, okay? Um, so I'll leave it up to you. You can uh, give it a try right now. Um, don't spend more than five minutes, give it a try. Um, if you struggle, watch the next video of the, of the derivation um, it, uh, it, or I'll leave it up to you how you'd like to do this or you can watch the next video um, first and get a sense and then now close the video and try to reproduce this. If you can, you know you understand this very well.